A really big question I get asked a lot is how do I make my business unique? And in the sort of business marketing world, this is translated to what is my unique selling proposition? And it is a really important question to be asking and probably one of the most important decisions that you make in your business. Because if you have the ability to be able to articulate how you do things differently and how what makes you different from other people who might do what you do out there in the marketplace, it's going to make it a whole lot easier for you to attract clients and help people to buy and invest in what it is that you're offering. So stay tuned on how you can find your own unique selling proposition in three simple ways. Hey, thanks for dropping by and joining me for this week's episode. If you are new here, I am Lydia Lee. I'm a work reinvention coach uh, and a small business strategist. And my job is to help you to build a business that you love, that's designed from your strengths, your values, and your personality. Uh, and if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I have new videos coming out every single week. Just hit the subscribe button and the no notification bell button to be the first to know when a new video comes out each week. Now, before we get started, I wanna know what worries or concerns or obstacles that you're facing right now when you are determining your unique selling proposition. Are you having trouble articulating the value of what you do? Are you having uh, trouble actually understanding what it is that you do that is so valuable, right? Or is it that you're simply guessing what your unique value proposition should be and you're not sure what other people are actually saying when it comes to experiencing your work. Now, let me know in the chat box or the comments box below, because I want to be able to help you navigate and go forward into a new way of looking into your unique selling proposition. So if you're trying to find your unique selling point or unique selling proposition, the first thing to do is to narrow your target audience. Now, this is something that's really important because you are not here on the planet to serve everybody and you don't appeal to everyone. And when you try to do so, that's what causes that murkiness feeling of who am I really to whom <laughs> and where do I really position myself in the marketplace. That's what makes it hard for you to find your niche, to really find uh, your space right in the world, wherever you are in your industry. So when you narrow down your target audience, being very, very specific about the kind of customers that you're serving, but most importantly, what specific problems do you actually solve for this specific target audience? Now, if you haven't focused on problems, there is a video that is appearing in the card somewhere on this on this um, this video to let you learn more about how to actually figure out your niche through the exploration of problems. You can click there to see the new video uh, for that. And I'll put it on the um, description box as well, because that's really going to help support you in finding your niche and understanding what a niche really is, which is a specific problem that you solve for a very specific audience. And when you are narrowing your focus, um, you start to be able to research who are the competitors in the marketplace? Who are these people? I hate calling them competitors because I think they are your colleagues. They're always going to solve that problem differently. But it's great to get a lay of the land about what is out there, what is being offered, what are people using, what are people buying, what are some forms of solutions out there uh, that might be in, in other coaches, other guides, right, other mentors out there. But also don't disregard, um, you know, products like books right? Courses, um, blogs that are also part and parcel of helping people reach similar goals that you are hoping to, to help your clients with. Um, it narrows again, your focus on specific people that also solve that problem, but perhaps they do something differently. And your job is to find out what are the gaps in the marketplace. And maybe you already have that intuition of what that is. Maybe you've seen what's going on in your industry and go, you know what? I don't want to talk about it like that anymore. Or those solutions are not my beliefs anymore. And I want to offer a new approach, right? A new way of solving this problem that I would like to be known for. Right. So as you narrow your target audience, you narrow your problems as well. And that's really going to allow you to articulate clearly how you approach those solutions and what solutions will you be creating to help people with their problems a lot more effectively. A second step to take when defining your unique selling proposition is to offer a unique process and a unique way to get people to results. And this is what I call your unique framework. Now you might've heard me talk about framework in the past, but if you haven't, what a framework of your work is, is actually the map, 
right? How you get people from A to B. What do you solve along the way from A to B? Because it's not just one little problem that you solve. There are multiple micro problems in the journey of your client that gets them to solve the entire big picture problem that they're actually paying for. And without a framework, you're not going to be able to understand what you do with clients and you can't repeat a process that you can stand behind and it's a process that you sell right? People buy an experience. They don't just buy your hour by hour. So having a system, having a process in your framework is super important to actually be able to stand out in the marketplace. So when you are able to design a unique framework to get people to great results repeatedly and consistently, you can use that framework and sell your services. You can talk about pieces of that framework. You can talk about the benefits of how you create that transformation for them along the way and really sell them into the experience and what it is that they get differently if they were to work with someone like you. Don't focus on the features of how long your sessions are or what prices your packages are, how, what's the duration of time that it takes to work with you. That's important information, but not as important as the value that they need to understand, not just at the end goal of what it is that you provide, but really all the micro uh, and mini milestones that they can, can win along the way with the work that you're doing with them. And why is it valuable? in, in you know, your words to them in how they can actually be approaching that journey with your philosophies, with your approach, right? With your perspective, that's gonna make that journey for them to get to results a lot easier. Now, if you haven't yet understood your framework, this is probably a good place to start. Think about these mini results, mini sequences of steps and actions that you take to get people to their bigger result and start to map out that outline so that you know this is the steps that you take to create big transformations for your clients. So when, how do you really find out in a lot of ways, you know, what works for people? Well, that's sort of where market research comes into play, right? You'll start to understand what you need to include in your framework when you actually do the due diligence to ask people what they need. I'm going to introduce you to you, if you haven't watched it already, another video I made about how to market research effectively by asking, using asking campaigns so that your customers actually tell you what to offer. Your customers can collaborate with you to build your framework and the outline for your offer. Uh, so I'm going to include that link on uh, underneath this video in the description box as well. Um, so when you do that, if you take the time to market research, gather intel, really see what has worked for people and what hasn't worked and what do they wish could be different in the way they approach their problem that perhaps other people aren't offering or there's a missing gap of something, right? Um, you can then tailor, right, your uh, sales message and your, your offer to ensure that your approach to solve these problems are taking in consideration what's really important to your clients, right? So for example, if you're a health coach and people want to lose weight and they want to keep the weight off. We know that's the core problem that they have, but perhaps how they want to go about to do that is they want to actually learn about their body type so they can, they can eat for their body type, or they're looking for long lasting lifestyle changes rather than short term, you know, health choices that are just to fit into a bikini for the summer, right? So that approach of more holistic practices or more mindful ways of weight loss, right? That is going to be really tailored to who they are and what their bodies are like. That might be your unique selling proposition. That's going to be very different from other coaches. Taking my own uh, business in an example as well, right? There's lots of people out there that help people launch businesses and help people escape the nine to five. But one of my unique selling propositions is that I help people build businesses in alignment with their strengths and their values and personality. And my framework ensures that they're building a model that pertains to those values. So that's what is also my one of my selling propositions that helps me to really stand out to the people that don't just want to learn traditional business building steps, but they really want to be involved in the way and be intentional in the way of how they built their business. All right. And the third step to help you to differentiate yourself from the competitors in the marketplace and to stand out in your business and make you unique is to actually be communicating your unique selling proposition often and leveraging your personality. That's a hugely important one. So how do you talk about your work? How do you talk about the value and articulate the value of your work so that people can really understand what they're investing in and why your methods and your solutions are their God saving grace to reaching the goals that they really want? Well, you need to start really showing what you know, right? And 
your personality is really involved in this because the more you are in tune with how you deliver your communication in your marketing, that's in line with the way that you communicate most naturally, that's when it's going to come out really authentically and it's going to just sound more natural like you, right? So when you think about articulating and communicating your unique selling proposition, get creative in how you want to showcase your approach, how you want to showcase some of the things that you really believe in, in some of the approaches that you're using or, or some of the perspectives or points of views that you really want to share. So if you're a great storyteller, you're finding that the way that you sell an idea is to tell stories, stories about yourself, stories about your clients, stories about the industry, whatever you've been observing out there in the marketplace, do it through a, you know, a live stream, right? Or a video like this and just talk things out in a storytelling approach. Or if you're someone of a bit of an investigator or a bit of a researcher and you want to know, you know, you want to really highlight statistics and real factual information that you want people to understand real clear and build your case for your ideas. Well, maybe you do it through a longer blog or a podcast, right? Um, any way that you might choose to deliver and communicate your USP should be very, very in alignment with the way that you want to communicate. Now, I know one of the things that I enjoy the most in um, talking about my approach and kind of proving examples of what it's like to build a business, right? That is in line with your strengths, your values, and your personality. Now, it doesn't; those stories doesn't always have to be from me. So um, I used to and still do I feature interviews. I feature other entrepreneurs that are doing things in this similar value. They have built the building blocks of their business using these concepts that I believe in, that I also teach, right, my students. And instead of just saying it over and over again about what my opinion is, I bring on other interviewees, other entrepreneurs, other inspirational people that can show their way of building a business that's also in alignment with those values. And that has really hit the mark as well with my audience to find really embrace why it's so important to do things that way and then they're a lot warm warmed up right to be interested to learn how to do that for themselves and that's when they start to be a lot more enthusiastic right about my offer what it is that I can do to help them uh, and it makes selling so much more easier when you can educate uh, your unique your unique selling proposition in these formats right that are fun creative and engaging for your clients uh, to ease them into being interested in your offer all right, so I hope that this was really valuable to you to start thinking about how to identify your own USP or your unique selling proposition. And I would love to hear from you. What is your biggest takeaway this week on finding out your USP and what approach or step today that you would love to take forth and try out to be able to stand tall and confident about what, how, how to differentiate yourself from the market and stand tall and unique in the marketplace. So I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me today. And as usual, if there's anything, any questions that you have for me or suggestions for videos for the future, please let me know as well in the comments. And thank you so very much for spending time with me today.